Welcome to Copy with Joe for Thursday, July 1st, 2010. Hey, Joe, how are things down there uh, in Harborton? Uh, things are actually beautiful today, Pete. Beautiful day. Joe, uh, we wanted to talk about this document, which is one of your favorite documents, um, this program for monetary reform, which is a suggestion for exactly what it says it is, put together by several eminent uh, economists in 1939. And uh, just to review, the Chicago Plan for Monetary Reform was pretty much put together in 1933, never right. even really got uh, submitted into Congress. There was some discussion of it in Congress. Well, it, it, you know, it became, it did become, Peter, uh, it, did become, it did become proposed legislation. The Chicago plan did be, become proposed legislation. Did become proposed le legislation, okay. Right, right. Obviously never got, never got passed. Out of one committee, never got out of one committee. Never got out of one committee. And the old Chicago plan would have had, what, the three parts of the American Monetary Act? Bring the Fed into the U.S. Treasury, repeal fractional reserve lending, banking, and... Spend green bucks. The U.S. Treasury creates the money and spends the green bucks into existence to get money into existence. Yeah, not in always exactly so many words, Pete, but it had all the same effects, yes. And so does this program. What's important about it? Well, um, is it you know, most important, is it still viable as, a, as reforms for today? This is oh, 1939, I, Joe. <laughs> You know, Pete, while we've been using the same monetary system, basically the Federal Reserve, debt money, fractional reserve, banking, monetary system since for 100 years, okay? So uh, anything that was relevant to fixing the shortcomings of that system uh, in 1939 are uh, only more so important today and only more so relevant today, Pete, okay? Um, you know... <sighs> I would, I would, I could say that the significance of the document is basically the policies, the rationale for the policies that it puts forward, and and uh, and why you know they're so important for having a stable uh, economy. Um, but you know, really, if you go if you go back, some of the authors of the Chicago Plan are also authors, first of all, of this document. Okay, some aren't. Um, <clears throat> the uh, and what would that represent? That represented concerted efforts by groups of economists to put forward policy uh, positions and recommend those policy positions to the government to alter and to amend the monetary system that we have, that one that, that I just described, Pete. Okay? So to me, the fact that a group of economists gets together and, you know, arrives at a consensus document, as they did with the Chicago plan, for instance, okay, um, it is a significant event. And in other words, to me, you have to find uh, something that goes as far as either the Chicago plan, but even more importantly, uh, the program for monetary reform, because it does go further um, in terms of its specificity. Um, and, and then, you know, when, the, when this group... Uh, put together the program, Pete. Uh, they circulated it as part. It's part actually of the program. It's written a foreword to it. This from the introduction, Joe. The program consists of 18 sections, which we believe comprise the essential features of what needs to be done in order to put our monetary system into working condition. Up to the date of writing, July 1939, 235 economists from 157 universities and colleges have expressed their general approval of this program. Forty more have approved it with reservations, and 43 have expressed disapproval. So that meant that at that time, remember it's 1939, Pete, okay? Significant because we had the 33 and 35 banking reforms, and they got put into place, and we had actually, you know, an expansion of the money s supply. But the deficit terrorists of the day took over again in 37 to 39 we had another downturn Pete okay so in other words the evidence of the fluctuations and the failure of having stable money of having a stable monetary system what we like to talk about as a permanent money system Pete 
the evidence of that has could be seen in terms of its impact on the overall population. And so this group of economists got together and put together this document and sent it out. And it was a radical departure, Pete, from fractional reserve banking and debt money. Did away with fractional reserve banking, did away with debt money. Uh, what could be more radical than that? Actually put the people acting through the government, through a, a federal monetary authority, in charge of determining the quantity of money. And then the government in charge of determining where the money was going to be spent and something that, you know, is, a, is again, a public process. So it was uh, such a wide, uh, a, a, again, uh, diversion, you know, from the banker's money system. You know, this was the economist's money system, Pete. Well, the Fed system. was less than 30 years old in 1929. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we had we had almost 20 years of the Fed when we got the 33 and 35, you know, banking reforms. And they did a lot, Pete. You know, they didn't do what the Chicago plan wanted to do because there was no monetary authority and there was no ability to create money without fractional reserve banking. Uh, but having said that, you know, there was a great separation of the powers of the investment bankers from the commercial banks. There was a lot of, you know, checks and balances put in place to to improve what, uh, from the speculation that happened in the 20s and into the 30s. That- so really, monetary policy ought to be something that is spelled out, uh, yeah, that there's a plan for, that there's a review of, that there's a report on, and there's a correction of, just like you do with anything else you know, in the world. You know? Why is it that monetary policy has to hide behind the curtain? And this document was very critical of the... Federal Reserve System, the fractional reserve banking system, the, all of that in terms of its lack of having any specificity. So again, the quantity authority is in the monetary authority. And then, you know, the the the, the actual issuance authority is with the is with the Congress where the Constitution provides it. It does away with fractional reserve banking. That is to say you don't lend you can't lend out any money that's not real money. Then it provides for full reserve banking and it provides the method by which fractional reserve banking is replaced with full reserve banking, Pete. Okay? You know, it's a huge misunderstanding out there in the world that there's a that there's either an impossibility or a mystery to how we're gonna change over to full reserve banking, and there shouldn't be. So in the final analysis, the uh the program for monetary reform uh, you know, at the time it was written, uh, you know, I feel was, you know, a, a document that should have been circulating around the world and, and having all of the countries of the world come in on it, Pete. I hope that, you know, I think you said we could. One of the problems with this document, Pete, is just the fact that it's not available anywhere. It is not available anywhere. Okay. The copy that you have is a copy of a copy that I had. That's a copy of a copy that somebody made. Because, because it's not the thing that people study, you know, in Economics 101 or Finance 101. It's the opposite of that. It's dealing with the whole underlying monetary system of the country, Pete. So uh, maybe there will be some more questions coming out of that as people see the document itself. Um, Joe, I'd like to hear a little bit, but we're out of time, how far it ever went. Um, you know, how did it die? And is, is this the last big thing that's happened in terms of greenback type monetary reform suggestions until this movement right now? Well, you know, I guess my, my answer to that is pretty much so, Pete, you know, pretty much so. There were efforts, you know, in Congress in the 50s and in the early 60s, you know, um, with Wright Patman and Jerry Voorhis and those guys were trying to restore constitutional money, Pete. But, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they were not successful. You know, there's, the powers that be are the powers that be. I don't deny that. And, uh, and, and that has, you know, serious implications for what we're trying to do. Okay, Joe. Well, thanks for that intro to the document. Okay, Pete. Let's Talk hope that there's going to be some discussion about it. Thanks, Pete. Okay, great. Ciao.